Hello and welcome to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amado. My guest today would excite you. Uh, he has just been elected to hold an office that he really has a lot of experience in doing. He's been a wise man before. When I come back, I'll tell you who my guest is. Honorable Enoch Te Mesa served as a member of parliament. He's been a minister. He's been a mayor. He's my guest on Face to Face. Honorable, you're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you. How have you been doing? I've been writing. Writing? I'm consulting for people in the accounting field. Wow. It's good to see you again, and mm. it's good to sit with you to interview you. Mm. Uh, I'm happy that you give us this opportunity and privilege to speak to you again. Wow. That's my pleasure. Thank you, sir. So the Honorable Enoch Temenza has been elected a member of the Council of State. We'll get to that very soon and find out what he's going to do, what it means. But before then, who is E.T. Mensa? For mm. people who are my age and younger who do not know. You know, well, I, I rather want to be introduced than being saying, I am, I am, I am. That's why I gave you my profile. Yes. Go to the profile. Yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so for those who do not know, you've been mayor of Accra before, mm -hmm. before you became member of parliament. Mm -hmm. You worked in the PNDC government. Yes. When was the first time you met Jerry Rollins? Oh, I met him in 1979 after the, you know, outbreak of the 18, you know, uh, 79 so episode. After the coup. Yeah. Did he say, oh, come and join my government? Or you were excited about what he did? You decided to join? How, how did this thing No, work? before uh, the Jufov broke out, some friends of mine and seniors, like Professor Akila Pasoya, Zatuchi Kata, um, Fuichi Kata, the former vice president, you know, was also one of those and uh, quite a number of few young men on campus. We, you know, formed a new democratic movement and a study group to study political events elsewhere and politics. This was when General. Achampong was president. Yeah, when Achampong was president, okay. we, you know, uh, some of us, in, um, the current president and I, we were all part of the movement which went throughout the country and fought against the champions union government. And after that, even when the SMC was out there, we were still fighting. We, you know, educated the various study groups, circles that we had all over the country. We used to go, platforms were created to educate people to get involved. Uh, we cannot sit back and allow events to unfold the way it's going. And the thing that we studied, Marxism and all, about all the countries which had emerged. For instance, Great Britain was a place that the first school was staged by Cromwell. Mm -hmm. And then we also examined and looked at the French Revolution, things that went on there, and then the Great October Revolution. The role of the youth were very young then. So when uh, 15th May broke out and later the leader of the group was uh, arraigned before a military tribunal. Flight Lieutenant Rollins. Yes. Uh, we followed it. We, you know, shared some things among ourselves, Fidel Castro, how he emerged. We studied it all and when he was arrested, the message that he gave out there, which led to what uh, that country is today. So when he was being tried, we thought that it was a good platform. And those Chachu was a lawyer, and I, then... The same Chachu Chikata in the Supreme Court now? Yes, he was his lawyer. I was in uh, Aduma Bosman's chambers. Aduma Bosman happens to be my cousin, but Ed and Ed, mine. His chambers took up the challenge. A few things were discussed. So we knew that something would happen. 
And it happened. When he grabbed the microphone, he said, let my people go. Hold me. Solely responsible. Sent certain, you know, message all over. Then, when it was released and eventually taken to GBC, he announced what had happened. We, uh, the group on Legon campus, I was in the finance office. There it was a blend of students, lecturers, and workers. So, so what were you then, lecturer or students? No, no, I was a, a worker, finance officer. Oh, you so an administrator? Finance, administrator, yes. Okay. So I used my position. We hijacked the, all the buses at the estate department, went around the halls to mobilize people to go and show support. On the streets? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we drove. We had, uh, most of the buses were not full. We drove to uh, the centers where we had our young people, Mampro B, you know, Dima. Or you drove out of campus. Yes, yeah, we were, we were going to send a message out there. That you were in support of what yeah, was happening. that okay. what had happened will help the nation all over the place. And, uh, we had, Kira uh, Kwasoya was the editor of our mouthpiece called Direction. So every time anything happened, that something needed to be done. We had the rapid response team, and I was coordinating it. We were, you know, work throughout the night. Sometimes when uh, there were times when the security were chasing us and all that, we would go and you know hide in uh, in Misantas. It was a lecture at the economic department, that was his place, that was telling out all these things, giving to the young ones, in tell them, spread it, so. So this was 1979? Yeah. So is that what they used to call the let the blood flow, was that it? No, the, the students were, they themselves, nobody as they one shout let the blood flow. When, you know, it was uh, released and he started his work, as well as students all over the country started Shouting, let the blood flow, so on and so forth. When did you meet him one on one, Jerry Rollins? Oh, I met him after he has been released. Okay. He used to come to Chachu's place. Chachu's place was one of the places that we used to hang out and all that. So, as a matter of fact, I got to know him, met him through uh, Chachu Chigata. So, did you, but when did he speak to you? When did you join his government and all of that? When, before. After the handover, while well, there we whatever had to be done to support what was happening in our own right, we did it. And when they handed over, other groups, you know, uh, emerged. The Jew Fourth Movement, the People's Revolution League of Ghana also emerged and so we we're, were working in different directions. But the first one was the new democratic movement. So what we used to do there, that we created pl youth platforms. When you before all this, Liman's government, I was a member of the PMP. I was a youth coordinator. Oh, two, yeah. two, also oh, and yeah. I were youth coordinators. And in Mamprobi, I was the uh, constituency secretary. And so I had a lot of you know, platforms all over. So we can we'll go and share our thoughts with them on all the issues. Why we shouldn't sit down and fold our arms, that we should get involved. Um, at that time, my city, Nalanda, was my um, mentor. He was the, uh, he became the MP for Mamprobi, then colleague of Mamprobi. And I was the, uh, his organizer. And he, he had a school, I did, this was business administration, and I used to teach the, you know, part-time. Accounting? Yeah. Okay. And, and that business service. Okay. You know. Yeah. And the f was, was being... So that was how I got to know the Imo Regalas and others. Well, they found some of us that young men, and they also, you know, being the mayor of Accra, was that your first major national assignment? Exactly. Okay. How, did, know, how, how did that happen? How old were you at the time? Well, 
I was 32. 32. Mm -hmm. And something, it was some coincidences because during the early months' time, the mayor of Accra, all the youth wanted me for everything, and they wanted me to be the mayor of Accra. And they went and lobbied, and the, some of the uh, women organizers all went and lobbied the president then. And I told them that I was then taking other courses, and I thought that I needed time. I didn't think that you know I should move into that position. At the, and they went and told uh, Dr. Liman, and he invited me to find out whether it was true that I said I didn't want to go. And I went, I went with some of the young people who were all cleared out to sit outside. And they asked me, I told them that I was taking certain courses and there were other things that I was doing, but I will continue to work for the PMP. But the part of things I was, I was doing, the external exams I was taking and all those things, I needed time. And they uh, he agreed. They agreed. That was the 5th May. Mm -hmm. 1982 then. Then when the revolution broke out. In December. Yeah, in December. 15th May, the following December, I was made the, I was appointed chairman of the interim management committee of the city of Accra. And under the PNDC. On the PNDC, we were three then. Uh, C.S. Boche was the one in charge of the Accra Community Center, and then Wing Commander Sabukle happens to be a military man who was appalled. And then Hawaji asked us to go and elect the chairman, just called us. He said, We should go and elect one of us as a chairman. When we got out of the place, when I sat somewhere, then both uh, Mr. Butchie, they were all elderly people, and Mr. Uh, Sabukli said, well, You have been involved in these things all along, so you should be the chairman. Is your baby? Yes, you should be the chairman. So they insisted. And so I became the chairman. And they, they were really out there for me. I became the chairman and we set the ball rolling. When we took over Accra, nobody really wouldn't want to go and take over such a situation. Even the headquarters of uh, city council was in a mess. When we went to inspect the place, there were rats and all things running around and all that. Wow. But was there not anybody there? Were people not running that there place? There were already? people running the place. That was how bad the situation was when you move in. The other things like the Senku days when there were no goods, nothing. You could not, you even needed to be connected to be able to buy Kenke in those days. And then when we got there, the administrator there, the city clerk, we demanded that, look, what I know in city administration is all about laws. So you should produce all the laws that they were using, the planning regulations, the, and bylaws. Things, the bylaws, the planning regulations, and it was something else. Then we also asked for the plan for the city, the Accra plan. It was like people felt there was nothing there. So when we left, what I told my team was that when you go through the books and when we were growing up, there was one person that everybody associated the city council with, Mr. Isikwe. I mean, you knew him before. He said, we should go and see Mr. Isikwe. And then the town clerk, Mr. Oku. I'm sure they will have some copies in their course today. So, we, and I told them that well, let's buy two bottles of whiskey. You know, <laughs> Black label, he loved uh, a new one. So, mm -hmm. And then two bottles of shrimp, traditional. Man. 
to go visit them. Uh, so this one had two, two, and then the clerk had one, one. So we went to, as I went and arranged for a meeting with him and he gave us time. We went there, and he was you know, quite interested. It was an interesting encounter. He was head of family. So he was a chairman and all others were invited. And then uh, Mr. Butchie chose to be a spokesperson. spokesperson. Then he, traditionally, he welcomed, he also spoke. Well, after we were welcomed, he introduced us and then passed the baton on to me to tell the old man and there were about 12 people who were with him why we had come. And I told him that, first of all, we've come here to congratulate him. Because when we were growing up, he was the one who served longest as mayor. As the mayor of the city. He used to carry the state sword. Anytime there was still the initial address, anything that the crown was going to do, he did it. And we were admiring him from a distance. When uh, the coup was first staged, he uh, was close to um, Jira Ankara. And those are the days when we were playing for, I was playing for Auras and later House of Folk. When they got there, I said, look, when I was writing my A-level paper, I said, look, I, I saw football. And, and he was the chairman of Akara House of Folk then. Okay, when you were a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really, really liked me. His, um, there was a name that we calling him with Kakaboka and all that. And so I just said, well, you come here because you serve the longest and nobody can equal the number of people who pass through the place after you have left. Didn't follow what you've done. And then when we went through the papers and books and things, one, we wanted to have a plan for Accra. Is there any plan for Accra? He said, of course. The 1958 Accra plan. Before he even started responding to all the things that we asked him, he broke down in tears for all that I said. We were, we were like surprised, not tears. He said, Look, the man cried. And after, you know, everybody there was, didn't know why. When the dust settled, he said, The reason he cried, because he knew that he cried, he didn't weep. And said so that people uh, always say that, well, when people, tears of joy, people shed tears of joy, but he had a uh, shared cry of joy. Because since he left, six years, you know, in that office, other people have come, you know, after him. Nobody had ever recognized. There was a partner there who did so much. He took over from the white guys. And that was why, looking at me, I didn't have even any gray apart from uh, Mr. Bucci. You were all young people. We were all young people. And for us to have taught the way we thought, they would tell us that there are laws and there is a plan. So he entered his room and brought me the Accra plan. I have a copy. I can show it to you. Interesting, 1958 Accra plan. But mm -hmm. the question would be, so this your meeting would have happened 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Is this the Accra you envisaged it to be? Accra still looks a bit planless. Mm, if you knew where we started from, when we took over Accra, in the book that I showed to you, when we took over Accra, Accra had only two traffic lights. Two. What you call the Kaneshi first light. Okay. And then, I'm not sure whether even you came to meet UTC. No. Around the Rollins Park, the UTC. Those were the only traffic lights in Accra. Dual carriage, just one. From around where you have the Betia Blanty Circle to the Labadi, you know, uh, beach around the uh, 
hotel over the La Palm. La Palm so the ring road. Yeah, the ring road. That was the only one. Everything else was single and, lane. And all the markets were in bad shape. 250 public toilets were all not functioning. You had to, if you ask people, live around Koligonon, Mamprobi, Nima. If you wanted to go to visit toilet, you have to wake up around 5 o'clock. And there were pieces of blocks and tin milk that people used to stand on. KNK, you needed to, have, to be connected to buy KNK. To the extent that people who thought they could build, uh, Cook, when they go and the thing wasn't ready, they bought the raw ones. Some things, your sons, baby, or your daughters, whatever, forget. You can't get some things. That was the essential day, essential commodities days. Which brought about the Kalabuli, which metamorphosed into what they call Jinabu, the highest. Accra was in a mess. And I, we had, we had, the whole of Accra, not now that it's been mm -hmm. uh, spirited. That, that was the situation. And so when we saw the things that were dead, when we got that, can you give me a second so I can bring you the okay. plan? I, 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 I have to take a quick break, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we can mention it. So this, so apart from the 1958 plan, we didn't, did we do new plans subsequently? We did. And at the the only high-rise building in the crowd was the Job Street Sunway. Seriously? The only high-rise. Which was started by Nkrumah. Yes, he built it. Wow. This is face to face on City TV. We are walking through the memory lane in Accra through the former mayor. You said for 10 years, right? As ten mayor. Years. So he's been ten years. mayor. 82 to 92. Mayor of Accra for 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, become member of parliament. Now he's a council of state member. Honorable Enoch T. Mensah. Don't go away. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast. And sometimes, it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact-checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 p.m. City TV. It's your world. Welcome back to Face to Face on the City TV. My name is Omaru Sandam, and my guest is uh, a member of the Council of State, newly elected Honorable Enoch Temesa. You've taken me through a lot of the things that, um, or the situation that it was when you became mayor, how you joined the PNDC, NDC. Have you written books? A lot of you old people, you don't write books for us to learn from. Have you written any book? Whatever I worked, I put together something for generations yet unborn like that. We also get to read from other places. Mm -hmm. So I have written the local government in Ghana, the Accra Experience, the title. Okay. I've written it. I wrote that one was launched long ago during uh, President uh, um, Prof. M Mills? Mills time. Okay. Okay. And so you have I, that I, book already? I put them out through uh, Kingdom books and they all ran out. Do you have uh, a book on Rollins? Your is he your mentor? Should I call him your ben, mentor? My mentor, my can say my father, He's my mentor. Professor, he, I wrote a book on him. We didn't see a lot of you writing books about him. Yeah, too. because of the you know the pressure of work. But um, what I started doing then, I knew that one day you had to put things together. So every segment along the way, I put something together. Uh, and I used that on the platforms when I was the um, youth leader in the NDC. I created TAIM, Tertiary Institutions Network okay. of NDC. Okay. I, one of the, the, I went to a few uh, conferences, and when we were in Zimbabwe at that time, Mugabe's place, they had it. The youth segment on the campuses were quite powerful. And 
We went to other places. We went to Cuba. We saw it all. So I came and established it. And that wing wasn't meant for Chobwe Chobwe. Intellectual the, wing. the intellectual wing of the you know NDC, I and we even trickle down to the communities. Well, you create platforms, you teach them, let them know where we are coming from, where we are going, how these things were done before. I see. I see. Sometimes people talk as if the uh, 4th June shouldn't have been, and 31st shouldn't have been. But all the democracies that we talk about around the world all started through revolutions. So and, should it? You know, so mm -hmm. um, in all the eight places I've been, I wrote this when we finished, I finished my work in Accra, and then I worked in sports. I have all the materials, I put them all together. Uh, one that covers the whole spectrum of, you know, uh, activities under late President Rollins, I have put it together. Oh, so we I've should be done, expecting done, a Rollins book? Yeah, I have, you know, the, I finished with the volume one. Oh, okay. And the title is Setting the Record Street. People are shouting, talking as if um, nothing had happened, but they do not know. When they were born, all the things that they are enjoying, the goodies that they are enjoying, have already been, you know, there, and people made it possible. So, I have the volume one. It's gone through all the processes, and I've approved of the final one, and the printers are printing it, and it will come out. So, we should and be then, expecting a Rollins volume one book by you. When, exactly. you say, when you say setting the record straight, for the journalists in me, I'll be itching to know, are you setting Professor Hoy's record straight? Because we saw Martin Amidu setting his record straight, or this an entirely different project you are Oh, doing? entirely. I mean, this setting the record straight, I started it whilst we were still, you know, in office. Oh, okay. And in segment. Okay. And they are the ones, I'm only, you know, collating them, putting okay. them together. Okay. And it will be two volumes, you know, that's why I am doing volume one, volume two, and I see. Uh, volume three. I see. And it deals with where we are coming from. Under the Mahama government, mm. there was what was called the three wise men. So, Kletus Avoka, Kletus Apul Avoka, who was majority leader. Mm. Yourself, you were majority whip or mm. minority whip? Pardon? You were majority whip. I was minority whip and majority, and majority whip. whip. Then, Alban Sumana Bagbin, who was majority leader as yeah, well at a point. Yeah. The three of you became the three wise men. Now, Bagbin has become speaker. Uh -huh. You become a member of the Council of State. You are going to play an advisory role. Was this the three wise men thing that you know propelled you to come and take up this position? Tell us how you you, you know moved on to this this new job or new position. Well, it's interesting. They, all of us, are, if you ask Babu today to define what that meant, he won't. I will not be able to, and Avocat will not be able to. When Prof died. And we, the six months when uh, Mama took, took over, after that we had a general election and we worked hard. We were out there. All the billboards that were put out there to go and thank the people. Because at the time, six months, the time was too limited to go into full blown. And some of us suggested it. And I went into the general election. Some of us, uh, Babri, myself, and some other people, there, there was a movement to move us out, send people to go out the miners in our constituencies, and all, and all the records are there. We just don't want to waste our time on these things. And so at the end of the, that second term election, we were told that they, they wanted to change the face of uh, the government. Yeah, of, of the government. Now, we're hearing it like rumors. But at the time meeting, somebody out there said there'll be changes. So, after all the uh, appointments have been announced, the people were giving us hope that oh, this will come and all that. Then, at the end of the day, when the coffers of appointments were empty, what could be created was, we had it too. Three wise men, nobody 
wrote to any of us. Uh, nobody no, had a chit chat with you and said nobody well. nobody did and so we were given office at the castle and given some assignment and we left three former cabinet ministers the thing so we shared it I took over the airport and then Bagwin was in charge of education and um Avoka. So, so I mean, and well, so you, within, did, within three weeks. Did you take it grudgingly, or you just took it, well, let me help the country, so it's fine? You, you know something? If anybody who dwells on grudges dies early, somebody is a child and says, look, I don't want to hear, you move on. that does not become the end of the world. Well, we know what we have done for all these times, and even some the way some of the things happened. I don't want to lament or talk about it. How were you hurt? We, not really, because if you are hurt, what do you want to do? There's nothing you can do about it. You move on. You move on in life. So the things that we needed to do started accountancy practice, doing things for people, moving out. I've had a lot of invitations outside. Did you ever speak to, to John to Mahama go to uh, say let that? Let me finish. Okay. I was, for the 10 years I was a male, people, wherever I went, I was pushed into leadership. Well, we met all the youth men in Lisbon, and they were to, you know, elect for the various uh, continent presidents to, for those continents. I didn't campaign, and I, I got it. And I've been a member of the work office of mayors up to today. I, um, people invite me to various places to come and share my experiences and all that, how I manage. But you know, uh, this book, there is the uh, introduction. One William Zatman in 1979 wrote a book about 11 West African states. And at the end of it, the analysis, he said all the countries, including Ghana, were failed states. You know what it means? And we saw it, the Kalabulian failed mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. And then later on, he followed Willem Zatman of John Hopkins University followed and analyzed and realized and came back to write how Jerry Rollins re-engineered a failed state and put it on the path of development. So that is my introduction, I'll put it out there. So people went, we went for this. We were all over the place without counting the cost. Why do you think Those they did that to you? It is only the person who fires a human being who has done nothing against you know, him who knows why. Did you ever meet him one-on-one -on -one to say, we Mr. Never did. Mr. President, why? We never did. Because they were giving, so they gave, gave us this uh, assignment, the uh, free education, doing something that improved the, uh, improving the education sector that Prof started to build you know, se secondary schools and all that. The plan, we worked on it. We worked on the plan to develop the new airport and then the Dubai that we're talking about, Nkuma talked about it long ago in his plans. Okay. So I brought it up, we picked it. When you go to the Prampan area, um, where Bundazi, where the soldiers are, mm -hmm. as far back as then, he acquired 60, 65,000 hectares of land for that purpose, because that place is the center of West Africa. So whatever you, you do there, you are targeting over 300 million clients. So the airport was going to be there, and it's just uh, a rotopolis, that's what you call it, mm -hmm. not just an airport. Yeah. You build you know, houses around it, first class houses, second class houses, third class houses. And it's a whole community. A whole community, and the, the Dubai, Type. would have been there. That was the Dubai type, which would have been there. And so we, we packaged it together. We packaged the education together. We sent it over to the presidency. 
And then we thought that we, the ministers responsible were to meet us, for us to explain, discuss with them. But never happened. So the three of you, for us, the understanding we had is that you are key advisors of the president. Did you ever, the three of you, sit with John Muhammad, the president, to advise him on A, B, C, D as a wise man? No, not at all. Not at all. Have you ever met him at a table as the three of you meeting him oh. as him? And not at all. The truth is bitter, but it must be told. Wow. Were you being paid, though? Well, that's the same old salaries that were. Also, you were, you, were, you were still in the system. so yeah, that's I was still in the system, so... Why did he put you there to advise him, but he never had you come to advise him? <laughs> Nobody, you know, forces to go and open anybody's office that have come to advise you. If you want to advise you, you are the one who will create the platform. That platform was never created, so... Have you made up since he lost the election? Have we? Made up. Have with, we? With, yeah, the three of you made up with him since he lost the election. What is that? What do you want to So my point is, have you had an encounter with him? Did you take part, for instance, in the 2020 election campaign? Did you campaign for him, all of those things? Considering, that, considering that he ditched you in, 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 in Siberia. You know, um, vengeance is, uh, is a lot. So at the time that we were all NDC people, we did what we could do in our own little way. You talked about being undermined in your constituency. You think that there was a grand agenda to remove you even oh, in parliament? Oh, there was. That one, <laughs> it's all the people who were used. I don't want to talk about that. Do you Let think just, the president had... I have, I have consigned that into the dustbin of history long ago. And I don't want to... There's nothing that you put in a dustbin that, that you go and back and take. Can I pick just this last thing from the dustbin? Do you know or think that President Mahama was behind... That's, you know, undermining decision to remove it from the house. Well, I have, I have no facts, but I know the when the thing happened, like I said, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I was recording some of it. What happened? Then who was who did what? And you know something, when the people were brought the twenty-five Kufo buses. We went to certain corners, chased our people, and they were, people were voting 10, 15 times, and they called me. And as a youth <laughs> leader for 20 years, the youth came from all over the place, wanted to come and fight. When I was told that, you can ask my wife and people who knew, you can ask, you know, Simon. I called them into a room, I said, my friends, don't go out. I'm going to fight for what? Because they begged me to go and be a member of parliament. In, you know, because uh, Prabhupada said I was such a key figure, you mobilizing the people, so I had to be in the center. And up to 1996, Pamela was nothing. We can talk about Pamela later. And then uh, 10 elders from Ningo and Pram Pram, including my two you know, uh, uncles and my senior brother. So come beg me, that I should blah, 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 blah. So I'll take permission, okay, 1996, let me go and run. Just, uh, run it. And I went around, and it went on and on and on. Yeah, so when I pulled them out there, Sibon was here, it's my witness. I told them, I listened to me, gentlemen, don't go and fight. They were going to crash the action which happened in Aoyang. The home village of the M current MP. That was why they went and played the game. All the buses went there, and people were just voting without anybody checking and all that. And then they, they didn't even get them. Tattoo. Anyway, so I told them, listen to me. They are going to do, do this because of me. I have been in the system. Ten years, Mayor, and Minister. I've been in several ministries and all that. And, People know my record. I have gone around the country. I have, they used me as them today. It was from most of the uh, the former education minister. When you ask him, any time I got to Kumasi, the hall would be filled. And there, they when they became a member of parliament, they say, hey, now how did you do? Because the people who run there, they are coming even and come and watch, and they sometimes even come to listen to us. 
We did all this. I don't want anybody. I don't want any blood in my Flow. white. Why I consider white apparel? I don't want it because I didn't want to come, and I wanted to stop. But they said, "Go on." And this one. So if it is the way some people want it, let it be. And I told them that that is why some of the things that I told some of the youth. I've told them that thing severally. I've told you this several on the platform. Violence. Che Guevara wrote once upon a time that if you are going to unleash violence, you have to be careful. You must be sure that you have put in place structures that can manage the fallout. Otherwise, don't do it. And I was not ready to put in place spare money to any structures to go on. Because the people will go way above excesses. the instruction. There will be excesses. Yeah, there will be excesses. And, and you can't be, control those. There would have been fatalities. Mm. The way they were, you know, what is it that you are doing this? And they listened to me. We gave them food, gave them TNT, and they went home. There are people who think that Speaker Bagbin, because mm. he was pushed by the NDC side to be the speaker, mm. would play the ball of the NDC and by extension play the ball of John Mahama. Do you think, based on your knowledge of him, Aban Bagbin, you've been with him in Parliament, you've worked with him, would he do the bidding of John Mahama just to undermine the Nanako Fado government? What? I don't think that it's, that thing makes sense to me. He will never. I know Bagwin. It's an independent thing. I like, I we are on the same, you know, we sing on the same page. I don't think that, and there's no evidence that NDC people pushed him. There is no evidence. No, I mean, in Parliament, it was the NDC side that pushed for him to be voted for, and they voted for him. So that's what I mean, the cham the, the caucus, the NDC caucus. Mm, because they, they, they know his pedigree and what he can do. So we shouldn't expect him to do NDC... Nobody should expect that these are people I know. I know Kletus very well. I know Abang Babi very well. Uh, as a majority whip and a minority whip, I work with him. Independent thing. I will never we were going to take a decision. We would debate, debate as if there are, you know, opposing parties there until we arrive at the right decision, the conclusion. There's no way anybody can use Bagbin. Nobody. There's no way opinion. anyone can use Bagbin. The old words of Honorable Itimeza, who knows him more than many. In fact, I'll come back and ask him himself whether Nana Akufado will be using him now that he's been elected a Council of State member or he will not be used. Stay with us on Face to Face. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. Uh, my guest is a member of the Council of States, newly elected. In 2016, 2017, you were going for the election of Council of States. Then you withdrew, and I think at the time you said it was your grandchildren or sons who advised you not to go. I'm sure this time around they said it's okay, you can go. Why did you become Council of States member? Well, when you're talking about 2017. 17. Yes, I, when I... When people heard, especially from the NDC at once heard that I was going to run for council of state in the government of the MPP. So they started all sorts of conspiracy theories, you know, writing things and so it was obvious that they didn't know what we were talking about. And some of my boys know my boys are all grown ups, doctors, accountants, lawyers, what have you. When they heard it, because of the way people were talking, they felt that the pressure should, they should put pressure on me or not. And other people who didn't understand either, those in this country. So, it was one of the, you know, 
my campaign managers, a lot of the boys from MPP were. So I, last minute, I would do. But the time that I decided to was short, that, you know, the platform to explain it wasn't, it wasn't there. there. And you had also left parliament, and people would think that you are fighting your own party and all of that. I'm sure you considered all those things. Uh, I just considered the fact that we well, have read a constitution back to back. You cannot be a member of parliament and not read a constitution. And I knew that the framers of the constitution putting that, you know, um, article in the constitution, they thought of it. Above all, the country has invested so much in me that I, can, I have to you give you back to, to the, the country. country. Are you still a member of the National Democratic Congress? I was, I was not just a member, I was a found, one of the founding members of, of the, NDC. No. the NDC. I have been and I've, I've not resigned. <laughs> You are going to be serving as counsel or advisor to Nana Dodan Kwakuvado, the president. Mm. He is on the MPP ticket. Mm. When your critics say that, oh, he's advising the enemy, quote and unquote, what would be your response to them? I will, I will just, you know, consign their criticism into the dustbin of history, which means that they don't even understand what they are criticizing. If you are going to criticize, you need to know why. And there is no position in Parliament which has no roots in the Constitution. Not one. And in Parliament, Parliament is not made up of only NDC and MPP, only NDC or MPP alone. There are even independents in there, and they used to have CBP and some yes. others. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is an issue that I don't want to talk about. Let me tell you what fired me on. Like I said, I have a lot to share with the, this country. And when you look at Article 89, it's there in black and white. That there shall be a council of state. And the composition will be made up as follows. Immediate pass, you know, chief justice of the republic. Immediate pass, head of the military. Immediate pass, head of the police. And then president of the National House of Chiefs. And 11 other persons who will be appointed by the president. By the president. And then the rest will have to go through an election which will be organized by the Electoral Commission according to Article 51 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And I qualify. I'm not an alien. I qualify by that. The reason I ask that question mm -hmm. is on the election day, mm -hmm. Henry Korte, who has been named Minister for Greater Accra Region, mm -hmm. spoke to journalists and said, people should vote for you. He's an MPP MP. Mm -hmm. for Ziyawaso Central. Mm -hmm. He was asking for you, an NDC man, a founding NDC man, to be elected. Should the NDC people trust that, oh, he's still on their side? Any NDC person who takes a stand doesn't know what he or she is talking about. I have given you the background, and I'm beginning. In. I'm sure that in many, many houses in this country, you don't have only other NDC or MPP in their families. They're mixed. They are mixed. And I have worked with uh, the president in parliament. We, he was part of our group when we fought at Champions Union government. So you know him from We worked TV. together against our Champions Union government. Then the you know, SMT government, we were in the trenches together. And we didn't you know, draw any line. And for me, for me, what is important for me is that what I'm doing is constitutional. And, and nobody, me, nobody has ever used me. You can't use me to do your bidding <laughs> when I don't believe in what you are telling me. It won't happen. No, 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 no way. Will you contest to be chairman of the council? When, you know, we read the bridge, we cross it. Please give us an inkling. Will you, will you consider it? 
Uh, the I, there's nothing there in the Constitution which, uh, how, that we will elect a child amongst ourselves. That's it. Will you put up your name? No, I, I, I don't. Like I told you, this is something that hasn't crossed my mind. <laughs> Honorable. In any corner that you put me, I will shine. Honorable. When I started playing real politics, I started as a mayor of the city. And gradually. You're getting to the highest of the highest. And gradually, I moved to you know, other ministries and performed. So you, I don't have to be rushing because I know that in life, when you rush, you will crash. Yes. And when you crash, you will never, you, you know, come, come up. When there were times when you know people are talking about this, when they said we should uh, step back, they said we are going to use the young people, and then we'll give you examples of when we were young and all that. When President Rollins started his, and we came in. We had the masters ahead of us, the, the Tanquaros, the, all the big weeks in the country were sourced. And that is why. But when you start life and you are rushing because somebody is driving a car, you want to drive that particular Mercedes Benz. Yet you don't have the resources. You, you don't know, you don't even know how to handle it. You have a problem. So I am going to work for a constitutional provision. The, the president of the Republic of Ghana, not the president of MPP, not the president of NDC. As soon as you are elected, you become the president of all of Ghana. And if the constitution says that this is what we should do, I will work against the constitution. Honorable Evangelist Enoch T. Mensa, thank you for speaking to us on Face to Face. Eh? You're welcome. <laughs> now that your beard is coming, you are maturing. I am growing slowly, sir. <laughs> Our last interview You're was... maturing. Um, slowly, slowly. I mean, I am not rushing. Yes. I don't want to crash. No, now you've realized it. I have. And the, the pace as which you are going, you get there. Thank you, sir. All of us, once upon a time, you know, we think that you want to be here. Take your time, man. And I'm happy that our viewers are watching you and I having a nice conversation that has ended, <laughs> that has ended very well. Yeah. The last time you didn't end, you just said you're tired, you don't want to have it. And yeah, I'm happy because you didn't know the nuances of what had happened over there. Thank you, and sir. I didn't want to go into those things. You don't, I said, you count your blessings, know your sorrows. So it's something which if I had thought would have been negative, I don't do it. And that was why I didn't want to talk about that child. We'll talk about Ningo Pram Pram at a later date. Oh, yeah, Thank sure. you. Thank you so much. Um, um, now I will talk about it, where I took it from and where I left it. Indeed. Thank you, sir. That's Honorable Enoch Temes, a former Ningo Pram Pram member of parliament, former minister on various portfolios, former mayor of Accra, former whip in parliament, and now he's a newly elected member of the Council of State, yet to be sworn in, though. And uh, he has not told me whether he will run for chairman or not, but we'll be watching the space. <laughs> Thank you. Stay with City TV. It's your world.